A few years ago, I was walking through the Christmas markets in Dublin. I was deeply engrossed in conversation, having a really lovely time with my husband. And then suddenly a piece of music came out over the loudspeakers and I found myself overwhelmed with emotion. I was, had tears rolling down my cheeks. That piece of music was my dad's favorite Christmas song. It was When a Child is Born by Johnny Mathis. I was a complete mess. And the reason is that it had completely taken me back to my childhood Christmases and the warmth and the love and the belonging and the excitement. And I suddenly felt overwhelmed with nostalgia, with grief, but also with happiness as well. It was a, a strange mixed emotion. And these are the kinds of things that we hear people saying all the time about music. Nostalgia is one of the most commonly used words to describe people's emotional responses to music. Music attaches itself to our lifetime memories, really. But there are two really significant things about that experience. The first thing is the immediacy with which that hit me, with the recognition of the song. It was so instant. And we know this now from research, that we have very quick recognition of songs within something like half a second of songs that we know. And we also know that those musical memories are really incredibly robust. So right into old age, we will still recognize those songs. And even people who develop dementia can still have access to those songs. We know from neuroimaging research that, that songs are stored in a, a relatively safe part of the brain. The medial prefrontal cortex seems to have an important role in this. And it's part of the reason why our musical memories seem to be so robust. The second striking thing about that experience was the vividness and the automatic way in which that memory came to mind. I had no choice, it was with me. And I was absolutely immersed back in that moment. It took me back to a, a very visceral experience. I want to do a thought experiment. I want you to imagine going to a desert island and the only thing you can take with you is eight songs. Which pieces of music would you take with you and why? Luckily for us, the BBC have been running this experiment for the last 75 years. They've been asking guests to come on and to consider this question. And we've been examining their responses. Some people just say they love the music. It makes them feel good. They love the performance. They love the lyrics. Sometimes people just say, oh, I love this song because it makes me want to get up and dance. Or I think it would make me feel happy or it would calm me down. But actually, more than 50% of the time, people are choose a piece of music because it reminds them of something significant. And that may be a period of time. It may be a specific place. It may be a very key moment in their life. But actually, the most common reason that people choose a piece of music to take to a desert island is because it reminds them of a person, someone significant in their life. So taking this music with them is a way of taking that person with them. There's something else that's interesting about these musical memories when we look at them. You might imagine that they'd be randomly spread across people's lives, but they're not. We find that they peak around the ages of somewhere between 10 and 20. In fact, 50% of people's memories, even for people in right into old age, came from between the ages of 10 and 30. There's something very significant about this time that music is taking us back to over and over again. You may say that this is a radio program and this is why this is the case. But actually, we've repeated this experiment on many people, and we find the same pattern emerges over and over again. When we've been able to look at it in a more fine-grained way, we find that that peak is actually between the ages of 15 and 19, and it's very profound. Interestingly, we see the same pattern when we ask people for which pieces of music they prefer. They seem to be dated and released around that same time of their life as well. And even if you look at people's ability to recognize music instantly, you see exactly the same pattern. Now, you might think these things are related, and to some extent they are, but actually, we can recognize music that we don't like at all. So they are different things, and they all show this same very robust effect. It's something that's been called the reminiscence bump, and we see it also for football players, for films, for books, for TV programs. So why does this happen? Well, the most obvious explanation is that this is when our brain is at its best for making memories. It's when we can lay down those memories best at any point in our life. That doesn't seem to be a complete explanation because it shifts around for different things. 
So a second possibility is that it's because we do lots of new things. It's when we first go to university or first go away from home for, for the first time. But it can also be maybe because those uh, experiences are particularly emotional. In fact, all of these things are likely to be true. But the thing that we focused on that seems to be particularly important is that it's a time in our life when we make a lot of decisions, decisions about who we want to be, where we want to live, who we want to live with, what we believe in, who we want to spend the rest of our lives with. So they're very critical decisions, and they're decisions about our identity. On Desert Island Discs, Bruce Springsteen had a lovely example of this. When he was asked to choose songs, one of the songs he chose to take with him was I Want to Hold Your Hand by the Beatles. And he said that this song was really pivotal in his decision to become a guitarist. He said, this was a song that changed the course of my life. So he can take any song in the world with him to this desert island. And three of the songs he chose to take were songs that reminded him of his decision to become a guitarist. These memories, we call them self-defining memories, are incredibly important in terms of who we are. And we know when we see people who lose access to these memories how profound an effect it has. So for music to give us access back to those memories is really important. So I just want to talk about the ways in which music can connect us with ourselves, with other people, and also with a wider community. In terms of connecting with our identity, we have the kind of experiences that Bruce Springsteen described. One of our other participants talked about she chose a song from The Sound of Music that she used to sing, and she remembered really vividly the moment where she sang into her hairbrush this song really loudly. And she became a singer. And that moment, again, to her was really, really important. We also go back to periods of time. So we might go back, in my case, I will go back to the 1980s because that's, again, my self-defining period. And interestingly, we will also often choose music that reminds us of a place. And what I've noticed with Desert Island Discs is that people are most likely to do this when they have been moved, when they've been displaced or when they've chosen to move to another country. And they will very often want to choose a piece of music that takes them back to their roots, to their hometown, to where their cultural and personal identity resides. So music connects us with our identity, which, as I've said, is incredibly important. But it also connects us to people, to our key relationships. It's very, very common for people to choose a song that reminds them of their mother or their father. They really often will say, this is just them. I only have to hear this song and I'm with them and it gives us that sense of attachment. People also very frequently choose songs that they play on holidays. So their, their family um, trips away where they would have a tape playing round and round and round, and that song reminds them of those, those summer holidays with their family. And they will also choose things that remind them of friendships. The reason that music is so central to those relationships is quite simply because music is built from the same building blocks that we use to communicate our important emotions. Our emotional signals like joy and distress and love and caring are all developed from the same things, which are melody, timbre, rhythm, and pitch. Those are the things we use to signal our own feelings and to connect with other people's feelings. So if we see somebody upset, we go, oh. And that's a musical sound. So music is the way in which we connect to people's emotions. And finally, music is a really important way for us to connect to others. We know that by listening to music together, it gives us a sense of collective identity. You've only got to look at people on football pitches or people singing in religious ceremonies to see how the music unites and bonds people and gives them that sense of collected identity. And there have been arguments made that this sort of collective participation in things like music and singing and dancing are almost uh, an e part of our evolutionary success. They give us this sense of connectedness, which is completely vital to our survival as a human species. So they allow us to feel very, very connected with those people we, who are like us. But is there a danger that it can sometimes separate it, us from people who are not like us? Music like laughter is a sign of our sense and our group and our sense of identity. When we hear music that we don't like being played by people that aren't like us, we can sometimes feel even more distant in the same way that if we hear people laughing and we're not part of that laughter, we can feel excluded by it. But I want to propose to you that one way 
that we can use music to connect with other people is to ask people about the songs that are important to them. The music they choose is irrelevant. It's the stories they tell. And one of the joys of my research is being able to ask people about their favorite songs and listen to their stories. And always there is a connection. There is a point of common humanity. So I want to suggest that while music can in some ways divide us at times, it can also be a route to connection. And I want to finish by quoting the opening of that Johnny Mathis song. So Johnny Mathis opens that song that I was talking about with this quote. He says, I believe we can be more sensitive to our fellow man, that we can be better neighbours to each other. I want to suggest to you that music will help you to connect with your identity and yourself. It will help you to confirm the connections you have with your family and your friends and your culture and your shared identity. But I also would like to challenge you to go out to somebody who you don't normally speak to and ask them about the songs that are important to them. Listen to their stories. I guarantee you will find some point of human connection with them. Thank you very much.